And a warm welcome back. This is Morning Live and we're coming to you live from the Heidelberg Aerodrome in Heidelberg, uh, east of Johannesburg. This is the home of the International Civil Aviation Day that is uh, celebrated on the 7th of December worldwide. This is uh, a day that seeks to, you know, get nations to reflect on the importance of civil aviation as a driver and an engine for global connectivity. And today is not all about a display of some of the acrobatic uh, displays that we'll be seeing later on today, but uh, it's a day as uh, we've heard earlier on from the two mayors that we've interviewed earlier to reflect on what can be done to ensure that communities benefit from the economic spin-offs that have been generated as a result of civil aviation. And we'll also take a look at uh, what are some of the career opportunities that are available to students. And uh, we'll, we'll see students here later on getting a first-hand experience of the whole machinery of uh, civil aviation. Earlier on, we spoke to the, uh, the local, uh, well, the Lesedi municipality mayor um, Councillor Ngosi and as well as the Citibank District, uh, municip well, District Municipality Mayor who also indicated that in the next 10 years the entry corridor will be a hive of civil aviation authority as a, uh, as a result of some of the programs that the government has been embarking on. But I'm now joined by the Deputy Minister for Transport, uh, uh, Ms. Sindesiwe Chikunga, uh, who will be taking us through what this day means, especially for the government who is a partner of the International Civil Aviation Day. Minister, a very good morning. Thank you so much for joining us welcome good morning and good morning to your viewers what is the importance of the international civil aviation day first and foremost first for south africa one south africa is a member state one of the 193 member states of icayo now it has been there since 1944 when ICAO was established and it has been said I think in 1993, in 1994 when ICAO was celebrating its 50th anniversary, it decided that we must then have a, an aviation, an international aviation day which is ICAD. And then South Africa started to celebrate and commemorate this day in 2003. Yeah. But over and above that South Africa is a member of the International Civil Aviation Council. And because of these roles that we play in this important body, we therefore have an important role to ensure that ICAT is celebrated and commemorated in South Africa because of that. Yes. But also because of our history as South Africa, that many people may not be aware one of the role of aviation and that aviation is accessible to anyone and all of us. Mm -hmm. Because in the past, aviation, if you talk aviation, it was just for an exclusive group. Yes. But now today we're saying aviation is actually an option for any ordinary South African. Right. And we probably take this information to all of them to say, you can even fly then driving or then using a train to go to a destination. Mm -hmm. So this is the important sector. But then of course to say, an ordinary person benefits from aviation, from tourists who come to South Africa and buy their beads and so on and so forth. Yeah. They do that through flying, through aviation. Mm -hmm. So there is no tourism, for instance, without, without, without aviation. There is no air cargo trade or, or, or air, car yes, air, air trade without aviation. Mm -hmm. So we participate in the transportation of air cargo, we participate in the transportation of passengers, but of course we ensure that we connect the people. Mm -hmm. It's one of the things that we're looking at, for instance, that we, bet we connect Africa much better right. than what is happening right now. We don't have to go to other continents or fly to other continents in order to fly to, South to Africa. Mm -hmm. And this we do through, through what we call Yomasokro decision which also as South Africa we are embarking and participating in the project yes. of ensuring that our skies are open to all countries in Africa yeah. and we treat aviation in the continent as domestic aviation than just international aviation and we believe that this will give us an opportunity to to, 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 to benefit more as a country in terms of uh, the Africa trade zone is announced yes. and, and, and any other uh, uh, participation in the, in the, in the economy of, of, of the continent. Yeah. So yes, this is how it is important. But also, aviation is important for peace and stability of countries. Mm -hmm. It is important for, for, for cultures and, and sharing those cultural practices. You will never know, you'll never go to China, fly, I mean, I mean swimming, you've got to fly. 
mm-hmm. and, 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 and aviation gives you that opportunity to fly for eight hours to a country that can actually take you 30 days to reach if you're, for instance, to sail in water. And this makes life easy for all of us. You know, Minister, I quite like uh, the example you made um, about tourism, about civil aviation as a catalyst to boosting tourism, both international and local tourism. Uh, you've made an example of, uh, you know, the importance of flying to China uh, and you can't drive to China, you can't swim to China, you can only fly. And I want us to talk about domestic tourism and about the importance of local and international travel as a vehicle for economic development. And I know that uh, the, the COVID-19 pandemic has, has hard hit different industries, in particular the aviation industry. And now we've seen some of the airlines charging ridiculous amounts of money for people, especially traveling locally, that, uh, well, I'm not sure whether they are trying to recover from the adverse effects of COVID-19, but uh, whatever it is, it's hitting the consumers real hard in their pockets. And in that way, in the medium to long term, it might even uh, deter uh, local travelers from traveling. So what's the department doing about that in terms of ensuring that airlines charge reasonable amounts of money in in order to promote local tourism? When the demand is higher than the supply, then you're likely to have cost going high. When uh, uh, airlines uh, uh, started to operate, many CEOs decided we're very careful on choosing routes and slots because the the impact of COVID on aviation was more than what we can think about. They were not collecting anything absolutely for about two years. And and they still had to pay people, they still had to maintain their aircrafts, they still had to maintain their pilots Mm. so that when they have to come back, they don't have to start from scratch with the training and so on. Because that is important for pilots that they are kept flying if you don't fly then it that that and it's costly for for any airline so they then had to choose routes and slots that are that have high traffic and and that that will benefit them much faster we're out of time unfortunately to deputy minister but just a quick question i want us to talk uh, briefly about some of the safety and security audits and in particular audits from the auditor general's office uh, taking into cognizance that some of the state-owned enterprises uh, have been really battling especially in the aviation space in fact, I'm very proud to announce that our three state-owned companies, all of them have, has, have received an unqualified audit opinion okay. and, of course, clean audits. But also we get audited by ICAO and we've been audited by even the U.S. as, as per our, our, our agreement with U.S. Okay. And with all of them, we're receiving flying results. We've just been audited by ICAO for se- aviation security. Mm. And we're very happy when we're in, in, in Canada to be informed by ICAO that we have not, uh, uh, in fact, we have managed to get to pass with flying colors. Mm. But also, U.S. the Secretary of Aviation in U.S. called us to a meeting to tell us that South Africa is in category one of U.S. Okay. What this means for South Africa is that any airline from South Africa can fly to U.S. Yes. But what it also means is that no other continent will come and say to us, "We want to audit you." We tell right, them that, but right. we've been audited by U.S. Really? and we're in category one. Leave us alone, right. and we fly to those countries. Deputy Minister, lovely chatting to you. Thank you so much for your time. That was the Deputy Minister of uh, Transport, uh, Mem Sindisiwe Chigunga, just talking to us about the importance of civil, av- civil aviation uh, from the perspective of the government, who is a partner to the C- International Civil Aviation Day. And uh, she spoke about some of the you know, economic spin-offs that can be generated from civil aviation, especially on the local front. And she sp- also spoke about you know, civil aviation as a catalyst for boosting tourism, both on the international and the local sphere. Today, we're coming to you live from Hadelberg Aerodrome, uh, which is where the International Civil Aviation Day will be celebrated and we'll also see a series of acrobatic displays a little later on.